Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Ellen. So today I'm going to teach you how to draw and paint this cute little seagull. Yep, it's very simple. I break it all down. If you don't know how to draw a bird, I'm going to show you how to draw this bird. I give you a reference photo. It's in the description box, the link. Um, I'm also going to show you how I use my travel brushes from Princeton and my little traveling palette. Really simple. And this is such a small little block from uh, Fabriano that you can take this little setup anywhere you want to go, throw it in your purse actually. It's such a lightweight, you know, the heaviest thing probably is the paints. Other than that, it's pretty lightweight. So if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section. I'm really trying to explore these days in plain air and taking things with me when I travel. So I want to take you along with me. Um, also check out my Patreon. I have ad free videos, traceables, exclusive tutorials, and a live stream in the top tier. I also have a Facebook group. We do, um, monthly challenges, weekly give, uh, excuse me, monthly challenges and monthly giveaways and weekly challenges as well. People share their paintings, et cetera, et cetera. Talk about things and you know, all things watercolor or whatever. Also my Patreon members get first dibs and watercolor workshops and retreats, which is a great little perk. Um, yeah, you can check out the link to that in the description box also as well. So without further ado, let's get drawing and painting a cute little seagull. Okay, so let's just go out, uh, go over how to draw the seagull. Um, I give you a reference photo, and I always say all the time that it's best to draw your own stuff because you're gonna create your own style, et cetera, et cetera. You're gonna grow as an artist. Um, if you're just constantly just using tracings, then you're never gonna grow. It's just very difficult to grow as a stylized artist. So just like the um, hummingbird tutorial I have that's pretty popular, Think of the bird, you know, obviously an oval shape, rounder shape here, but it's like an S, like look at his neck here. It's an S, right? And another S, right? So if you have like the round here and the oval here, it's an S and then it's another S, right? So we'll do it again. It's an S, S, but like a wiggly S, right? And then we have the smaller S. And then you have the beak kind of points downward like that. And of course the eye, and it comes in here like that. So then in this part, the wing, just kind of go like that. And you pull the tail down. Now this is kind of really over-exaggerated S, so you kind of just go in here and smooth it out. So it's not so exaggerated. And then you've got his like wonky little legs, which are his feet bending, see this little bend here, and then the little web. Down, down, a little web. So that's kind of it. And then you have the wing like this, and the wing that kind of comes here, and then this one's got the tail. Well, not really a tail, it's the, it's the feathers. See? Pull it in here. You just pull it around. I hope that makes sense. All right, slow the video down, and you'll figure it out. Okay, another way to do it is like an oval, right? Then another oval and a circle. And then from there, you do the small curved S. And here, S kind of coming out, right? And you just do the curve for the beak. Here we go, pull it in. There's the eye. And then his tail feathers again, see? You can draw this. You have to practice. Use pencil first and then go over it. Voila. And then the background can be anything you want. He can be on the beach. He can be on a nice little log, you know, on a fence. Do whatever you want. This is just a simple background. This is actually taking in a girl of Portugal, which I'll be in next year at my workshop. I mean, excuse me, my retreat uh, next June. So if you're on that, we're gonna have a great time. Um, so yeah, see, you'll see some, well, this seagull's everywhere, but this one's a little bit better than that one. But you see how we gonna draw that? Slow it down, the video. Think of in terms of like ovals and circles, oval, right, circle, and then you're slowly curving, slowly curving, and you're just pulling the beak. It has a little bunky legs. <laughs> and then the tail is just like a line, curves and go in and then you have the wing and that's your seagull similar to the little lovely um 
hummingbird, but just wider and bigger, right? So he was, the hummingbird was like a little S, a little S, skinnier, you know, like it was a smaller S. This one is much bigger. And that's that. And then you can put it on any size paper you want. I'm gonna be using a five by seven block by Fabriano, it's cold press for my uh, seagull, and we'll get started with that. So now that we've got that sketched in, I've got mine all sketched in. I'm going to be showing you how I would paint this if I was like plain airing. Um, I'm, this is my little cheapo little palette that I bring with me. Nothing super extravagant. I mean, I have a link to it on my Amazon shop. I think it's like 12. I don't know. So cheap, right? And you can just keep filling in the pans. And if you activate them with a the little spray bottle, you can get anywhere at any craft store. And then this is great. This is the uh, Princeton Travel Aqua Elite brushes. They magnetize when they closure. So <coughs> I have them on my chair and see how this just sticks to that? It's kind of cool. So if you can grip this on like a chair, then this grips and then you kind of stay with that. So it's kind of cool. I like that. And I just think all I would need really is to use my 12 on this one, which is great. If I do need to get detailed, I'll get down to the smaller one, which is, let's see, they have a four or something, the six, eight. It's a six, eight, and a four. So the four is a really small. Look at that little detail brush. I wish they had an eight. I'm sorry, a 10. They, they have a six, a four, a six, an eight, and a 12. So you just kind of stick that like that on the chair. But I'll have it like this. And look at all these nooks and crannies of colors in here. So I've got some paints gray kind of happening here and browns here, and I'll just be using all that good stuff um, with my little painting here. If I have paper towel near me or a rag, I'll use that and just start playing with the paint. So I've got some paints gray happening over here. Just a lovely color. Um, I'm gonna want some like ultramarine blue or cobalt. Here's the cobalt, throw that in on the side here. And when you have a small palette like this, you're just kind of playing with what you got in here. You can kind of remove some of the paint, but just kind of play with all of it. So I'm just going to grab my Payne's Gray and see this is a really nice cast shadow kind of happening here. He's mostly white, but you need to show that he's white. Either you're going to do a <clears throat> background, and so he's got the negative space painted behind him, or see there's a lot of negative space so you can see how bright white it is. Or if you don't want to do that, um, you would have to just outline him. So it's either or. You know, I'm playing around with the color here. Paint's gray, loosen it up. So let's see, it's got a little blue happening. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm gonna take that little wash of color right there. I'm gonna take my brush, dip it in the water, kind of blend it. See how I'm dipping and tapping on the paper towel to get off excess water. And I'm slowly blending it so you can see that it's got the shadow kind of on this side. I'm gonna leave that white still over here and over here and it's a little bit darker as we go in here if you want to grab a little blue cast to that you can change it up it doesn't have to all be gray gray and i see this kind of like a blue cast kind of happening in here play with play around with that it's a little bit darker kind of down by the wing here there's a little lightness of white in here and then just kind of going in here on this wing here. Again, just adding in some of that lovely gray color. I'm just using paints gray, water down. Just filling it in and then the wing down here has a little white edge to it, so I'm gonna try and leave that. Gonna kind of be conscious of leaving that white edge. And I'm just putting that light wash in right now. And then of course the tail is much darker, as you can see in the photograph. So we just finished all this. I'm going to blend this right here, the shadow. And so I think I'm going to paint the background to give the negative space to make it pop, right? I'm not going to paint this section in here yet because it's going to bleed and I, want to, I don't want it to bleed. I'm going to leave that white in here. I'll just kind of put in a little bit of color, get it ready. See how I zigzag this? Zigzag and I'm pulling up a little more because this section in here is going to get much darker, right? And you're leaving some white spots, as you can see the tail, not tail, but the feather. Just go in like that. 
extend it a little more and that's that just really simple this part still needs to be a little bit darker kind of in here I'll grab some darker paints gray like basically almost like cream and we'll just kind of blend it in here see still very damp and I'm just gonna slightly blend it with the you know with the number 12 it has a great tip you don't even actually need the number four I'm just kind of blending a little bit and adding in some of these feathers kind of just making that movement of a feather swooping like this and then a little bit up here too like I said, it doesn't have to be perfect all the time. People get so bogged down on this stuff. I'm gonna get back here a little darker here and I'll kind of blend that. The shadow. So it has some like oomph to it, right? The rest of it's really simple and white. And then the, the little legs my yellow is kind of dirty. I've got a dirty greenish yellow. So I'll just take my yellow cabin yellow deep. I'll add a little red cabin red light to it to just change that color so it's not such a green yellow. Water that down and I'll put in the little legs. And these are a little bit bright. They'll 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 dry lighter if they're too light or too bright. It's no big deal. I'll add a little shadow in there. You can see in the bottom of his feet, I'm sorry, in the photograph. There's a shadow kind of on his feet. So you can make a purple color because the opposite of yellow is purple or add a little pants gray, play around with that. Take a little pants gray on the side here. Just a little bit with my brush. I'm not gonna fuss too much. That's that. And use the same color for the beak. We don't have to get technical with this beak. There is like a little reddish spot I don't know what that is. You don't have to put that in because I feel like it's kind of strange. And if the eye is kind of like yellow, kind of fill it in and put the little dot. Oop. Simple. So now let's walk. Let's concentrate on the color around it. What, what did you want to put in there? Do you want to put a water scene? I think I'm going to put sand. So I'll use my burnt umber. Water this down, and I'll do the background as like the ocean. So I'm just going to turn this on its side, play around with it. He's in the sand, hanging out on the beach. Just going to fill it in around these little legs here. You don't have to fill in the whole space. See, I'm just kind of leaving some white. Just do that. And we'll start playing around with the background of the sky. So I'm just thinking ocean. I'm going to grab some what color is it? That's tur that is peacock blue. I wanted ultramarine blue, which I believe this is. And some mixing in with the paints gray. Once you have the whole burn drawn, that's the easy part. You know, now you got to play with the wash around it. You do need to mix up a good amount of paint. I'll tell you that. Because you want to make sure you get enough paint to go around your bird otherwise you're stuck scrambling to mix up enough paint so in this little well here see i keep grabbing some more paint and loosening it up because i don't want to be stuck with not enough paint i think i'm good a little touch of paint gray and go back in again okay all right this is the tricky part you gotta have to kind of go around the bird and then you because it's ocean you want to go like that See, we're going around the bird. But we want to kind of wiggle it. You know that you're seeing kind of like water this way. So you have to take your time, try and get each section fairly quickly. I know it could be intimidating for some people, but this is such a small area. It's a five by seven. You should be able to do it. Now I might want to remove it if I want it to be the shoreline. Kind of going into the water. I don't know. I haven't figured that out yet. Or just he's on the beach and there's blue behind him. We can just do that too. So 
So you're going to paint in between the little legs. Don't worry if it messed up as long as you get the paint around mostly his white area so that he really stands out. See, I got little um, over here, a little hesitant, so I kind of made like a mushy kind of situation. You don't want to be like that. See, so I'm going to go in here, go in and fill in the color around his little head. Just like so, take your time and then go whoosh, get that color out there. We all know it's a seagull. <laughs> Just, oops. See? Okay, even I have to be careful. I'm just wiggling the paint. You can have just one flat wash if you want to. I'm just playing around with making it look like the oceans behind him. Just for effect, you know. And then once you have the first wash down, you can really kind of play around with adding in color. It's not as difficult once you get that first one done. Still want to go around the legs in this area. I'm going to grab some more ultramarine blue. A lot thicker. Just make that pop. Make that beak pop. And be cautious and careful around the head. See, it was not that difficult once you drew it. And then you're just taking your time painting around. Now, if you're really, really, really freaking out about painting around him, just do the masking fluid and then paint around him. But I think that's pretty simple, right? And then you can go in when that brown area is dry, do some dry brushing, getting some dry brush color here, some brown. He's got a shadow kind of happening, right? Could be gray. I did a little brown. Tap some of this color in here. Just kind of mush it. Right? And he's at the beach, hanging out. Getting a little dry brushing happening here. But how long did that take you to do a cute little seagull? Zero. And then you could go back in once this birdie bird dude has dried up and kind of like put in some of those details with the wing. Get my pants gray here. I'll add in some of the detail. Just lighten, you know, add in some washes of the wing. Just like so. It's just a little too light. It needs to be a little darker than this. So I have to go back in with another little wash of glaze of color so it doesn't look super white. You really want that like intense shadow on this on this like photograph you see. Even down here it wouldn't be so white. You kind of have to wash in just a light gray on the wing. It's white, but it's not intensely white as it is here because the sun's coming on there. And get this a little bit darker still. And then we have our cute little seagull. Isn't he cute? <laughs> we can play around with the background color too, get a little bit darker. I've got some ultramarine blue and some paints gray. I wouldn't mess with it too much, but still very damp. Getting a thick, thick, thick Prussian blue, ultimate blue, pants gray. Getting 
get it nice darker. I like the way the ultramarine blue kind of goes, but if you want to add some deeper, darker values kind of happening, please feel free to do that. You might just punch it up a little bit more. Don't make it so streaky, you know, but it will give it some more emphasis on the white. It's kind of like really pull it out. Play around with it, the colors. Most important thing is just to learn how to draw the bird simply and then go in and paint them simply. Sometimes when you overthink things, that's the problem. Just simple washes create simple, beautiful designs. And that's our bird and we're sticking with it. <laughs> I hope this was fun. And now for the eye, it's such a small detail. You can use, I'm just gonna use the tip of this brush. I didn't even use the four. How great is that? Just to put the little dot in his eye. And uh, around the eye itself, it's like a red, red color. Orangey, almost like an orangey red. I'm gonna go around the little eye. And even play around with the beak a little bit because it's kind of one note. Putting a little line here. Give it some more emphasis. You could punch up that yellow a little more. But that's pretty much it. This is, this is gonna be our little seagull. And really, it didn't take much time to paint him, did it? Nope. It would make a great little gift to somebody who loves loves the ocean like I do. And I think I'm gonna put a little ultramarine blue shadow here with the brown. I'm just gonna wash out that brown a little bit with the blue. I'm not fond of the brown that I put in there. On his little feet. And there we go. So thank you so much for stopping by my channel. I hope this was informative. If you wanted to paint a seagull, um, learning how to draw him, learning how to paint him, trying some travel paints and brushes. You should definitely try them. Um, I love them, they're great. And see how you do. Small little pad of paper, small brush. Well, it's not a small brush, it's the actual brushes. They just fold into like a smaller carrying case, which are great. And they're so lightweight, fantastic. You definitely should try them. And a little palette. So this is perfect to grab, throw it on the plane with you, all that good stuff. So take care, have a great day, and I'll speak to you soon.